Um, how would you describe this this linebacker? Man, something special. Uh, everybody puts in so much time and extra work outside of just what's you know required as a program, and it's awesome to see how unified we've become and to see like in the three years that I've been here, just how much we've grown so close together and gelled so well. It's just awesome to see us like go out and just work and show what we can do, like all of our abilities. Everyone's you know pushing each other, finding ways like our weaknesses and you know coaching up each other. Like it's not. You know, leave one man out for himself. We're all doing it together, trying to see who we can turn around and bring along with us. You know, so it's been awesome. Coach Lynch described you guys as like the junkies, as far as your dedication to studying film, being prepared. What has led to that dedication and preparation? I mean, you know, think of the greats. We see y'all listen today. Film study. You learn about your opponents. It helps you be, become prepared. Like, yes, you can arise to the occasion, but. At the end of the day, whenever stress hits, you know, hits us, we got to fall back on our habits. And when we fall back onto our film study and preparation that we take outside of just like our regular position meetings and whatnot, it has led to us like being able to make plays and be able to just show up athleticism and our abilities. So just being able to have film study has, you know, been contagious. And you see other guys sit, sit and do it, and it's like, okay, well, we're going to do it too, you know. And it's just been something that we've been able to build on, and, you know, it's helped us progress and learn a lot more about the game. The uh, next step for you been here a couple of years, you've played a little bit. You need to get where you want to be. What, what's next for you? Man, next step for me is just playing confidence, you know, having confidence while I'm playing, you know, just trusting my ability. I know what I'm doing. I take the time outside of football to watch film, you know, just trust my ability and be able to go make a play regardless if I mess up, you know, be in every play, be across the field, just be an athlete, you know, show my athleticism. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to work out for you if you just want to push yourself and give that 110 on the field. What stands out about Coach Inge and who he is? What stands out about Coach Inge and who he is as a coach? Uh, coach Inge, you know, he never holds back on who he is, and I think it gives that vulnerability piece, you know. Like, he's not worried about trying to prove himself to us. He comes to us just trying to make sure that it's more than just a football game to us. It's, it's more than we're just football players. He wants to develop us as men, he wants to teach us how to be the right people, doing the right things when no one's watching, having integrity, you know, having that character piece of everything. and. With that, I think it's really just helped us, you know, earn that trust with him. Yes, he's funny and has his moments and has his little things to him, but I think that just helps us, you know, be ourselves at the end of the day, and it helps us just build into who we are as a person and allows us to show that and display it on the field. So it's been awesome. Yes, of course. Uh, Al is an amazing dude, obviously a legend here and a great player. Um, you always hear these stories about Al Wilson and how he led the team and. Uh, he always takes time. There was one time last year where I was actually walking out of the game and walking back up uh, towards the facility, and he pulled me aside in the parking lot because he recognized me and was just talking to me and just talking about, like, the game and whatnot and just certain things that he sees. And, you know, he puts a lot of dedication. I know he's had his time here and whatnot, but the amount of time, like I said, and consideration he takes in trying to come back and give back to um, just to our program and to Tennessee itself really shows that, like, he cares a lot, and he knows that, like, his words have power, and uh, his platform and what he's done here has power. And so he's just trying to build back into us, and it helps us just grow from that. So you always... he still looks like he's been has on and got to play. Oh, yeah, he's a solid today. dude for sure. Um, you know, I think most guys, you know, you get done, it's like, oh, well, I'm done playing. But, yeah, he definitely you put some pads on. He definitely fill them out for sure. So. so you're always trying to do the best of practice and everything. A guy like that's there to watch, does it? That motivates you to go a little bit harder and maybe show out? Always. Uh, you know, it's one of those things is like, you know there's scouts here, you know there's a lot of professionals, you know, it's a professional environment we're in. And so you always just want to try to show out because you never know who's going to be watching. So you shouldn't just be something, like I said earlier, to rise to the occasion just because so-and-so is here. You should always, you know, be consistent with that and have a consistent energy and effort that you're displaying. And so... Yes, Al Wilson's here is always like, man, that's a Tennessee legend. And obviously that linebacker, you want to show up for him. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just being who we are and giving that effort consistently. So despite whoever's watching. How do you feel like your role within the linebacker room maybe as a leader is different this year than it was last year? Mm, uh, just being more vocal, to be honest. Uh, you know, I actually just got back from the ball leadership. And you think of leadership being something where, you always see people being out front, you know, with hoorah and whatnot and just having the loudest voice. But uh, for me, my leadership has honestly been a lot more of just talking one-on-one -on -one with people. And that's really helped, you know, seeing that out of country, seeing the power of sport and 
being able to give back into these programs and people out there who truly just look up to us as athletes has like allowed me to take that back here and to show like, man, it doesn't have to be a certain way of leadership. It can be so many different ways that can be unique to me. And so like from our role, it's been obviously I can speak up in situations, speak up to the group and even to the team, but also, like I said, just falling back on leading by example and always just being able to like help one-on-one with people because it, I feel like it builds more of a trust and a relationship side. And that's always been big for me is building that relationship with people on my team because that builds that trust and shows that I'd really care for them and want them to do good. So if I can take time to build onto who they are and what they're doing and, you know, trying to help them get their fundamentals down, then I feel that it will ultimately just lead for a better, you know, like gelling of the team and just, you know, put us in the right direction. And then you're, yeah, so I've always been uh, number eight you know, coming out of middle school and high school. And, um, I, you know, it was bittersweet because I've kind of built a name for 40 here. And so that's what everyone's always just remembered me as. But for me, I felt that with the number eight, it was a good reminder to not worry about, you know, not overthink and think so much on the field. Because in high school, you know, I was just going out being an athlete and trusting my ability and just trying to get my all for my team. And that's really the reason why I chose it, because it was just a reminder of me is to stop overthinking so much and just trust myself. Because as long as I can give my all and my effort to the team, at the end of the day, that that's who it's going to be. And it doesn't have to be anything else about besides that. So that's why I took it. Your dad played the Canadian ball. Is there any parts of the Canadian game that maybe translate into your game today? I mean, I, <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest. My dad was a free safety. Uh, you know, he was about – Two, twelve, two, fifteen. He's a pretty solid, dude. Uh, coming down, and to be honest, like I think I just get like come pursuing the ball and stuff from him, and being able to you know cross, cross, go across the field and whatnot. Uh, so I get that from him, but he's always been so hard on me. You know, he's like, you never gonna be, you know, you weren't as fast as me, or like you never did this like me. I always jump five inches higher than you, or whatnot. So he's always just pushed me, and that's kind of just drove me to you know always trying to get better than him. But at the end of the day, I always just keep bettering myself, and that's all we can do. Thanks, Taylor.